It was the year 1945, date was 18th August. There was a plane crash, actually the plane was a war plane, Sally Bomber, crashed at the Taihoku airport of Taiwan. According to the theory, military theory, uh, they said that when a bomber like that category, where there was no seat even, the people sit on the uh, ground. That, that type of accident leads all the passengers should die. Anyway, <clears throat> things occurred in a different manner and most of the patients had 80% burn and they had been taken to the Momin Hospital, military hospital in Taiwan. Let us see that what really happened with that accident, especially with that Sally Bomber. Now, there are three theories still today are running. One theory, people believe, yes, the accident took place, plane nose down and all the passengers died. Second theory is Bose survived and he lived up to 1985 or even till today he is living in the some Himalayas as a Baba. And the third one, consulting, unraveling many archival documents from at least four to five archives of the world. I consulted 18 archives in Russia. I consulted so many public record office, PRO in London, Kew Gardens. I consulted Indian National Archives. Of course, I had never been to America, but the friends and the colleagues, they have sent a lot of materials from there also. And the rest was from Japan, where my sister used to live, used to teach in the Tokyo University. But uh, most of the documents been taken by the Americans after the Second World War. So this is the picture where we stand. Let us analyze that where, what had been unraveled, unearthed, and what are the net results we are getting. Let us start from this, that 18th August was the accident they claimed in the paper, but the announcement was made only on the 25th of August. And 25th August, why? Because the route was taken by Bose is not Taiwan. The common belief goes that Taiwan, Taiwan was not the route. His route was that time he was in Bangkok. From Bangkok, he went to Saigon, which is a Ho Chi Minh city at the present moment. From Saigon, he left for Dairen, and Dairen that time was occupied by the Japanese army on 18, 19, 28 August. So they had to clear, and who cleared it? The Soviet army. Soviet army and Soviet NKVD leaders, they cleared it and Bose is entering Soviet Union on 23rd August, which is showing in the Omsk city of Siberia. They have got the record which I have seen it and noted down, they never allowed me to do the Xerox. So this is my findings to start with. Now, let us see what was the activities of the British officers, what they were doing in the British High Commission situated in Tokyo. Colonel Figes, he was in charge of the intelligence branch. And Colonel Figes, while getting this news, he thought that let us find out in detail, so he engaged two intelligence officer, Davis and Finney. Davis went to Bangkok and Finney went to Taiwan and the details report they prepared in 45 after 23rd August. 
because the news also been delivered by a non-governmental or a private paper or private agency. So there was also little doubt is there. So these two officers, they brought back the report, they submitted the report that was suppressed till 1995. Nobody used to know about that. What was the report? This, was, this report was when unearthed. The result was both of the investigators of that team, they concluded their report with the statement that it's a total theory of plan of deception. Both Davis and Finney wrote it. Now the most interesting part, these two reports were, were in the Russian archives also, in English. So from there I discovered that they reported that both the reports are giving the same answer that it's a plan of deception. Figures got confused. Being the intelligence officer of MI2 sitting in Tokyo, he had to answer after the Second World War and he played such an important role there. So what he did, he just tried to suppress those two reports and brought few other witnesses from other sites, some nurses, some doctors and something like that and eyewitnesses and prepared a wonderful report which cannot be read even. But and produced that yes, we have got the information that he died in that plane crash in 1945, 18th August. Now the question remains that if, if it is 18th August then why the news came so late, Figues answered that it is for the domain agency, all the late things occurred. So with this report, when it came to the public and in that report it is written that informed the Indian community, Indians were very much perturbed and by that time, Aung San, the father of uh, Su uh, Chi, he was very close to Shubhash Chandra Bose, he informed, started informing the Indians that he is very much alive. Indians thought that he is alive in Rangoon. So the rumor started in India and other places that Bose is in Rangoon, Bose is in Soviet Union also, he, they were telling, and they are telling that he will come back with a new batch of people, with new ideas and with new army to liberate our motherland. This was, the thing was going on September, October, November of 1945, after the news broke. So when it was in the height of the news, the people realized that we, they have to stop it in some way or other. In Delhi, the National Herald, 31st December, first page, news came out, Bos is in Russia. That was the shocking news for the British people. That in India, the National Herald, 31st December of 1945, is giving this news that Bos is in Russia. There were doubts, there were so many investigations that it decided to do, but the war was over. All the countries are negotiating for the diplomatic relations, especially Soviet Union, because it's, it was the war between the Soviet and the Germany, and Soviet won. So they were calling the negotiating for the uh, diplomatic relations. Immediately on the 6th January Pravda, that is the government's paper. Of course, in a communist world, you won't get any uh, freedom of speech. So the uh, daily newspaper also belong to the government. There are three to four columns article on this, that how India can think that uh, uh, he uh, was a, he is in Russia. India is a country with all sorts of fantasies and they like to make fairy tales. So with that fairy tale, they are thinking that Bose is in Russia. And this with three columns article written by Zaslavsky, a very eminent uh, uh, journalist during Stalin's time. And he was the closest person of Stalin. And his uh, grandson is still alive and I got a good relation with him to get all the news from him also. And he gave me the paper of that uh, uh, 1946 January. 
After that, in February, the MI2 officers of Britishers like uh, Jenkins, especially Jenkins and other, they got very much disturbed that what is, the, what is it happening? That the Indian paper National Herald is giving one report, answering Pravda, what is the relation is going on between these two countries, what sort of diplomatic relations to come out with this sort of facts. So they thought that they have to end up the whole thing some way or other. So a lot of correspondences between Young and Jenkins are there. And Jenkins, being the intelligence officer of MI2, he's writing that, please, Young, make Subhash permanently dead. Have you ever heard of this sentence that you have to make somebody permanently dead? That was the line written by a British officer. And they always used to call Shubash as their number one enemy. So this was the month of February and March of 1946. In March, Mountbatten decided and requested Nehru to go to Malayan, meet the Malayan governor in Singapore and to settle the wealth of INA. Now the wealth of INA is a huge thing. One can keep on talking about it because each and everybody having their rubber plantation, tin factories, the bank, the gold mines, they donated to Indian National Army. It is not only the ornaments and out of emotion people were giving things. It was a huge amount of money was coming from the corporate world as well as from these sort of business people, the Chettiers and others, they donated. So they wanted to find out and these all dealing was done by the overseas bank. So in this dealing one can find out that there's a, this amount of money where it has gone. So Nehru came and met the governor as well as he wrote a letter giving thanks to Mountbatten. That time Mountbatten was in Australia. He said that you have to be here, that letter. All are in my book. I've produced it in my book. So hurriedly Mountbatten returned to Malaya to meet the governor. And who was watching all these things? The MI2 officer Hugh Toy, the author of Springing Tiger. He was the watchdog of the British Intelligence Bureau. And there they were deciding what to happen. You see, this decision went on for a long time. Sometimes they were deciding that money will be divided into Pakistan, India and Britain. Sometimes it was decided that money will be divided in all the Southeast Asian countries and Britain and India. Britain never left his share. That is the main thing. Britain kept on asking for the share. And finally, the share went to India and Britain. Such a huge amount of money. And uh, I would like to mention here that while I was working in England, uh, this <clears throat> in the public record office, so I wanted to meet Hugh Toy to make an interview. So I went to, uh, I tried him. He said that you see, uh, Bose is dead and gone, and I don't want to discuss all these things with you over the phone. I said, I don't want to discuss about his death. What I'm going to do with his uh, death? I just wanted to show you that I have brought few papers in Russian from the Russian archives. So if you are interested, the other side remained quiet, after all a British. How did you get it? I said, because the uh, disintegration of Soviet Union, all the archives are open. Do you know Russian? I said, yes, that is my bread. Can you make it a day uh, next Sunday? Can you come over to my place? I said, of course. So with those papers, I went to Colonel Toy and he took me to his house and he entertained me and offered me a good lunch and everything was done. Then he showed me there is a brass, uh, this uh, inlay, this uh, um, uh, safe, this old safe attached to the wall. He pulled the drawers. Files after files, files after files. I just wanted to jump on it. He said, no, madam, I'm sorry. I won't allow you to touch them also, and I won't allow you to see them also. These files are my custody, and these files are all about Shubhash Chandra Bose. That was the year 1996 when I visited, and I was working in public record office. 
and in the afternoon, after the lunch and all, all of a sudden, he asked me that, uh, what happened to the Iron Age money? I said, Colonel, why you are asking me? I was not in the Second World War and I don't have any idea of it. He said, 70,000 crores in your money, where it has gone. I said, that, that answer you will give, from where am I to know? So I quote unquote, Hugh Toy, who spoke on that 96 August to me, while on my way back to Moscow, that this is the amount had been taken and shared by England and India. We don't know, people usually say that it is in the Switzerland, that Swiss bank and all, but that is the duty of the government to find out and to get the details of it, what really happened with that money. So after that, when all these negotiations were going on, then there was, a, there was some uh, negotiation with the death, because whether money, whether uh, the, uh, this uh, government is asking all these things, but you have to put Shubhash Chandra Bush the sure and definite death certificate. So for death certificate, what happened? They tried to bring a doctor to write for this death report. Before that only, the Commonwealth uh, history section, they wanted to have a definite answer. So for this definite answer, Indian political intelligence, that is IPI, requested the DIB, Director of Intelligence Bureau, to make a final report of it before starting with the death reports. And that they did it in 1946, May, June, and the report is with me and it is in my book also that concludes that after searching all the all the details of the of uh, uh, whereabouts of Shubhash Chandra Bosch we came to the conclusion that Bosch is in Russia that is the report of the British people and that was hidden in the Commonwealth office with all difficulties we got it after that, they decided that whatever may be the case, whether the Britishers are telling or the others are telling, let us make the death reports, not the certificate, because certificate making it will be very difficult, because uh, when he died, there was no uh, certificate, there's no cremation report, the cremation report, there's no police report, nothing was there. Till today, there's nothing was there. So how could one prove that without police report, without discharge report, without uh, uh, cremation report, how could you prove that a person has died? Anyway, so the death report started finding one doctor who used to work in the Mamun hospital, that's a military hospital, and it is a permanent military hospital, mind you. Because during the Second World War, all over the world, there were temporary hospitals were made and they were dismantled. But this, these few hospitals, which are permanent, and still it is existing, and it hasn't got any registered entry or exit or any other report regarding Shubhash Chandra Bose with this name. Anyway, this uh, report was, the responsibility was given to one of the doctors. His name is Suruta. So Suruta took the responsibility to make the report, and he gave all the details that how was the condition of the patient and etc, etc. And then he said that around evening I was very hungry, so I went out of the cabin, out of that ward, and after having some little bite, I came back and I found that he's gasping and he passed away somewhere after uh, around 6.30, 7 in the evening. This is the first death report produced by the Dr. Suruta in 1946 July. If we go and see, check the Russian archives during that period, 1946 July, one thing is very interesting that Nehru is leaving for Bombay to meet the chief Soviet agent who was working there for all through the war periods. His name was Sayadians. And I have gone through his files in Russia. And Nehru is requesting him with a letter 
that while you are going back after the war to your country, please hand over this letter to Stalin. So this much I have got it from the related uh, news and related uh, the details. But still now I'm hunting that particular context of the letter, which I couldn't get as yet. And, uh, and for a foreigner, it will be very difficult to enter into the KGB archives or the president archive, because it is the property of the president archive. Anyway, it is just a coincidence and a corroborative fact I would like to mention that while making the death reports one side, the other side that our would-be prime minister, that is 46 August, is going there. In addition to that, the Communist Party leader, Somnath Lahiri, he is also leaving. Look at the condition, 46, it's just the war is over. And a communist leader is getting a visa to uh, reach Soviet Union at the end of July for three or four days. And after coming back, he was meeting his uh, comrades in Calcutta and uh, in the Communist Party office. And they were talking about it. And they said uh, that, uh, how do you find him? He just smiled and he didn't answer though. Somebody is writing his memoirs there and he said that I requested Shomrat Babu to, find, uh, to answer us that uh, how did he find him. Not the name is not mentioned, but Shomrat Babu remained quiet and he just smiled. That means at least it is giving a little hint that Shomrat Babu got a chance to meet Shubhash in 1946. This is the August. Then September, again there is a commotion with that certificate and uh, those reports, death reports. So the government, what they did, the Japanese government along with the Britishers, they called for another doctor and that doctor's name is Yushumi. And they said that whatever experiences you have got, you write it. Yushumi is writing that he is the doctor who treated Shubhash Chandra Bose and he, when the body was brought, 80% burnt was there and he couldn't administer the camphor uh, injection and after all these things said and done, after 12.30 night, the patient passed away. So look at the discrepancies. The, uh, one doctor of July is telling 7 o'clock in the evening and the other doctor in his uh, uh, report he's telling that he passed away in 1239. So all these discrepancies and all these um, doubts and uh, uh, actually put the people in a very confused situation that nowhere they are getting the real truth of it. And this way interim government is ending and by the next year 1947 we are getting our independence. When we got our independence, our Prime Minister was not selected, but he was an elected, he was not an elected Prime Minister, he was a selected Prime Minister. Hurriedly he had been made without any hesitation and without any dealing with a proper way. So after that, Nehru, we became the Prime Minister and Soviet Union was calling all the diplomatic relations to open it. Stalin had a total innate hatred towards Nehru. He never bothered to invite him. And Stalin, for up till the death of uh, Stalin, 1953, Nehru was not allowed to enter Soviet Union. What he did, he sent his sister as a diplomat, as an ambassador. That also Stalin never gave the appointment to Vijayalakshmi Pandit. Though after coming back she said this thing that she is going to convey some news and all, but uh, she was not entertained by the then the uh, leader of Soviet Union. And after the death of Stalin only, things started moving in another way. Nehru had to wait for all this period. Because he found, and as well as there was advice from the British side, that wait and see. You cannot do anything now. So 53, after the death, 54 was the negotiation went, and then 55, 
was the starting point of Indo-Soviet friendship. The Khrushchev and Bulganin, they invited uh, Nehru. He went there and also in reciprocation, Nehru also invited them. And since then, our friendship started with that country. And in the meantime, I would like to say that uh, though Stalin didn't give any interview to uh, Vijayalakshmi Pandit, but he gave interview to, not interview actually, he met Radhakrishnan. When Radhakrishnan went there as a ambassador, he met him. He met him and after coming back, Radhakrishnan came to Calcutta because he was taken a lien from Calcutta University. He was a professor of philosophy. So as a result, in the common room, he started out of excitement, started talking to the people and colleagues that, you know, this is the thing that I have seen him from distance. Anyway, the news actually runs up to the parliament, up to Delhi. Nehru immediately called Radhakrishnan back to Delhi. Amendment was taken place in our constitution. The, uh, this uh, vice president uh, post was created and he had been, Radhakrishnan had been appointed as a vice president of India. This was the theory and later on he became the president so that the whole thing should not be done, should not be known. After that, in 1956, that was the turning point of the Soviet history, Congress. That is the famous 20th Congress of the so Communist Party of Soviet Union. That was the turning point, de-Stalinization and everything started that time. Khrushchev thought that he is going to build up a new Soviet socialist world. That was an absolutely wrong idea, I must say. Anyway, so while organizing that, there was a special section on Shubhash Chandra Bose. And there was a special dealing with Shubhash Chandra Bose on 1956. And if you go to see in India, Nehru made a 1956 Shanavas committee because he wanted to get rid of the whole problem and he wanted to, I mean, say that uh, he died in that plane crash. He wanted to establish it. As a result, this uh, 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 here in India, there is also lots of things were boiling. And there, the, uh, it's a marathon, uh, uh, this Congress took place in Russia for so many months and so many things had happened. And uh, Nehru here was uh, making the whole thing in a way that he spoke in the parliament that I have received few documents and materials from uh, Japan where I find that those photographs and, and all these things are giving the exact witness that he died in the plane crash. And immediately he formed the committee headed by Shah Nawaz. That time Shah Nawaz became the betrayer of Shivas Chandra Bose and the Indian National Army. And you most probably know that Shah Nawaz is the grandfather of our famous actor Shah Rukh Khan. And uh, these, all these things, I mean, made him to have the head. And one of the brothers of Shivas Chandra Bose was also the member of that committee and one civilian. And they, Nehru gave them full liberty to find out wherever you find. But when they reached Japan to investigate Taihuku uh, airport, immediately the information came that Taihuku airport is not giving the permission. Actually, that was not the thing. If you go through the papers of the archival documents, you will find that Nehru requested our ambassador there in Japan that don't allow them, this group to go there and they are attended and they came back and they gave report that with all the documents we came to the conclusion that he died, Shubhash Chandra Bosch died on 18th August in that plane crash. So this was the story and then Nehru standing in the parliament declared that he died in the uh, plane crash and since then that theory goes on telling that he died in the plane crash which is absolutely an alleged story. Actually, Nehru wanted to close the chapter and with this decision, he arranged the whole story in such a way that 
He got few informations from SAIR, who was a publicity uh, minister of uh, Arzi Hukumat Azad Hind. He helped him to get some few pages and papers, but till today, we haven't got those papers. Where are they? We also don't know, and we haven't seen. As a scholar, as an academic, I can, I can demand it that those papers and photographs should be shown to us. But that was not shown. With that help, Nehru stood in the parliament and announced that I think the Shanawas committee declared that he died in the plane crash, and there the whole controversy ends. But what happened? Government accepted, but public rejected. Public never liked it, and they said that we haven't seen those papers. We don't know what really happened, and there is no such proof they were not allowed to go to Taiwan. So how could we believe that he died in that plane crash? Days are going on from 56 onwards, people unrest. Then there was a lot of change amongst the member of parliament, as well as amongst the scholars, intellectuals, politicians, and the different chief ministers of different states. They were also revolting and writing letters to the respective prime minister that we just want to know the truth. It was going on from 56 to 70. Then Shamar Guho, member of the Lok Sabha, he took an immense interest and started collecting signature that there should be another, not the committee, but there should be with a legal head who he is going to investigate and who will give the verdict. So they selected Justice Khosla. And Khosla was selected by Indira Gandhi. Khosla was a person, you know, his leaning was towards the left people also, the left parties. So Indira took the chance of putting him there so that in this combination of Congress and the left, the answer will be on, their, on her side. So 385 MPs, they gave their signature, and Khosla, as a chairperson, Khosla commissioned the next commission started in the 70s. That time, at least, many witnesses were alive, but their answers were all negative against this plane crash. This Sharadindu, uh, Dattam Jungnar, and many are there. I don't want to name them, but they all uh, put their answer against this, uh, uh, this truth. So, Khosla thought that uh, though he was, he was also not allowed to visit Taiwan, and Khosla thought that, uh, let me end up and close up the whole thing with this, uh, that uh, not very, uh, his conclusion was not very clear about it. He went to Mrs. Gandhi, that time Mrs. Gandhi was the uh, Prime Minister of 74, but Mrs. Gandhi requested him to put the answer that he died in the plane crash, and Khosla had to do it under the pressure of the Congress and the left. Left party also played a very vital role there. So again the answer came that he died in the plane crash. So what happened? Government accepted, but the public rejected. Public remained with, with that uh, thinking and with that question that we still are not satisfied with these two answers and we need the real answer and we think that truth prevails, we will be getting the answer in near future.